Let's speak with Del Babu, uh, former chief superintendent in the Met Police. Del, afternoon to you. It's a, it's a grim afternoon. and a sad, disturbing Indeed. day. This. And, you know, you've dealt with a lot of cases. You've interviewed some very bad people and nicked some pretty bad people in your time. But, I mean, this really does sit in a very different sphere. It does. I mean, it's pretty shocking that you have somebody who is there to look after children actually murdering them. Uh, and and seven, seven convictions for murder, attempted convictions, six. We have now a wider inquiry. And I think what the fundamental element to this will be, why was this not picked up earlier? Why were colleagues who had raised this issue mm. actually uh, placed under uh, some duress, forced to attend uh, meetings with Letby, where they had to have uh, a, a, an attempt to try and get over the tensions that they were... Yeah. They had their... And they were accused... They were sitting next to somebody who was her murderer. And, and she... I mean, this, this is a woman that put in a grievance claim when she was moved from that department. I mean, people will be asking questions. Hang on. Look, all of this was going on. You would... At the very least, you'd be suspended from the entire place. But she was moved to other duties and then put in a grievance uh, complaint, uh, presumably to the HR department, saying, you know, this is unfair, I've been treated badly. So she was doubling down on this and presumably to, to cover and camouflage any further investigation. But, I mean, this gives you a taster and I, I guess it wouldn't be a surprise to somebody like you as a former cop uh, because criminals and psychopaths, the one thing they can do really well is lie. And they lie with impunity, as they say. Absolutely, they yeah. Uh, I mean, what she was done, she was moved to a, an area where she had access to sensitive records. Uh, so so uh, it's, it's, it's pretty horrific what she's done. But what adds to this yeah. is that when it was first raised, she was continued to stay in that role yep. and two further babies were murdered by her. Uh, so, so I think the, the, the parents of all of the children are going to be absolutely devastated. But just imagine how you would feel as a parent when you know that these issues were raised, yeah. there was an investigation which was clearly not done in a robust and an effective way. She pulled the wool over the eyes of very senior people and the very people that had raised the issues were then vindic uh, who are now vindicated were had their finger pointed at them. They had to sit in a room with her yeah. and they had their fingers the fingers were pointed at them to say you need to improve your relationships with this woman. The wo same woman who they knew was a murderer. I mean, that, that is extraordinary in itself. And she, but she kept this pretense going. And that is, again, the makeup, the psychology of, of killers, in this case, serial killers. She becomes the most prolific serial killer of babies that we have ever seen and one of the most prolific serial killers. Um, but to keep that up, and, and she did yeah. so in all of the interviews, I mean, she, she clearly felt, and whether this is an ego thing, whatever is at play in the minds of people that are capable of this level of horrendous criminality, uh, in her mind, she clearly felt that the happy-go-lucky, ordinary girl lived in an ordinary house, went on holidays, had some friends, that all of that was going to be enough somehow to get her out of this, to never yeah, be questioned. Yeah. But, of course, I mean, the, the, the body of, that... of evidence, when you see it now, Dal, is absolutely huge. Yeah, absolutely. But I think there, there's a lot for the hospital to look at. You, you, you had three deaths prior to her work, working there. You then had seven deaths in a very, very short space yeah. of time. Now, what, what you should be doing is asking, well, what's happening here? Uh, who, who was on duty all the time? And I appreciate you saying there's a, a plethora of evidence now, but I think there was a plethora of evidence then. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why colleagues were raising concerns about her. What, what happens in hospital is when you, you, you have a serious incident where you have a death, unexpected death, you have a serious incident investigation where somebody independent comes in and looks at these issues. Mm. Now, I think what will be looked at is how vigorous was that serious incident investigation? Did the hospital share that information with the authorities? Were they robust in the investigations? I think they'll also look at the HR process to see did they just keel over because somebody had made a complaint and says, look, I'm, I'm being bullied, and they, they sort, of, sort of keeled over and said that. But they'll also look at the other places she's worked at uh, and see if there are other deaths that could, yeah. be, could be a need to be investigated because she was there. I mean, there was never, there was never somebody who, was, who could say she was sort of putting a, putting a pillow over a child's mouth or something. A lot of this was circumstantial evidence, but when you bring it all together, it is yeah. pretty fundamental. The diary she kept at home saying, I'm evil, uh, the, the diary that talked about the deaths of the 
children said I was responsible. So if you look at all of that, if you look at what the, uh, her colleagues were saying, if you look at the facts that she was on duty at those particular times, I mean, it's, it's a pretty significant amount of yeah. uh, evidence. And you have to ask, what were the hospital authorities? It looks like they were asleep at the wheel. They really need to be looking at their processes and procedures. I think inevitably there will be a public inquiry that will look at this because it's people will be horrified. We and, and there may even be an appeal on this. We spoke to a, <clears throat> a defence lawyer, and I don't know how much um, mm. cops love a defence lawyer. <laughs> uh, but th th he was he was making the point that he's been involved in other cases where you know there, there clearly was circumstantial evidence. The fact that somebody might be there at the, in all of these deaths doesn't in itself mean you are guilty. And a lot of the witnesses that came forward, his contention was. They were talking about, you know, in my view, this probably happened. But, and I put the same point down to the to the barrister, uh, which is that, yeah, on its own, that might be insufficient. But this was thousands and thousands of pages of evidence, and we'll come on to the police investigation in a second, which I think was incredibly thorough. I mean, magnificent work from the constabulary there in Cheshire. Uh, but you put it all together, and there clearly is, by any measure, demonstrably enough evidence and it went to a jury and the jury didn't just simply wave it through and say guilty. They looked at it thoroughly. They were out for the best part of a month looking at this. So diligent was the need to get this absolutely right. So this wasn't on some kind of whim. This was a thorough case. Ten months in the courtroom and a, a, and a month of that deliberating on the verdicts. I don't think anybody's going to say this was an overnight decision. No, this no. was big and it was thorough. Absolutely. And I think at a time when the police are under so much scrutiny and criticism, I think it's, it's right to commend Cheshire Police because they've done an extraordinary job because this would have taken hours and hours and lots of policemen and policewomen would have had to work very, very long hours yeah. to, to do this. And, and you imagine uncovering this evidence as it happens. It, it will have an impact on those particular officers. So I think we need to commend those officers for the work that they've done. But as you said, this, this is not just a sort of two-minute trial. This is the longest murder trial that there's, uh, there's been in this country. And she has, uh, let be, has used every single opportunity to bring doubt into the minds of the jurors. But when you look at all the evidence as a whole, which the jury would have done, so yeah. the fact that she was around at those particular times, the things that she's written in her books about being responsible for, for these murders, if you look at what the doctors who were the consultants, so these are people, senior people, who I've, um, know what they're doing, who've, who've, who have expressed concerns about it. And then you have to look at what the hospital did. You know, they, they insisted on having a, a conciliatory meeting where HR has got in and said, sat down with the doctors and said, you need to sort of be nicer to this person. And they must be boiling, their blood must have been boiling, thinking, we're absolutely convinced that you've been murdering children. You've then had this issue of um, serious incident investigations. How robust was that by the hospital? How often did the hospital share information? Uh, there'll be questions for the board. You know, what, yep. what, were the, what were the board doing? How much scrutiny did they have? An oversight. So I, I think they, this will be a massive um, a, a case in, in, to look at what lessons can be learned because should, this should never ever happen. Never Indeed. ever happen again. And, and the question, Dell, that is asked forevermore and will always be asked in these kind of cases is why? You know, why would somebody do mm. this? We know that a case like this Letby case, it, it will at some point be made into dramas and films and people will write books about this, people will have theories that the good and the great will come forward as to what they think is going on. Uh, one theory that there is there, and it may be a little more than a theory, is that this woman was in love, had a crush on one of the, the, the senior consultants uh, and had began the process of trying to injure children in order to get their attention so that they would come on board and she could be around them, etc. I would imagine that if you're, if you have such uh, horrendous and heinous capabilities to murder uh, seven children, murdered six attempted murders. So that that would have been thirteen that she tried to murder. Well, the conviction. That's the conviction. Convictions, and yeah, and yeah. There, there could be others, of yeah. course. Uh, that that wouldn't surely be just based on a crush on a colleague. That the, the mind of the serial killer m must be must function at a wider level than just one factor. There's something else going on. Well, I mean, people are... There's no, no stranger than uh, folk, I think. Uh, well, and, indeed. Uh, and I think the, there was a clear suggestion that there was a friendship with a, a married man. 
there was a suggestion that that, that may have been more than a friendship during the trial. These issues came up. So I think we, we'll have to... Um, We'll, we'll get more, more and more evidence as, as time goes by because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people going around and asking those questions. There'll be yeah. people from the hospital because while the trial's been going on, it's sub judice, people can't talk about these of issues. Course. Um, and I think, you know, what we've had is a, uh, the, the verdicts have been coming in but they've not been shared. Yeah. Whereas now, uh, now she's been convicted, Letby's been convicted, I think uh, a lot of people will come forward uh, and we'll hear a lot more about what was happening in the hospital. We'll hear a lot more about her personal life. Her pr previous hospital that she worked at uh, as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure people will come forward because there was two deaths there. Yeah. But there will be people come forward and who will, who will know about her relationships. Um, and, and I think they, she would have been protected in the sense that they, the judge would want to make sure that it was all based on evidence. If they are now looking at other evidence as well, and the fact that she's had relationships and some of those relationships may be the motive, we, don't, we may never know. We may yeah. never know because it will be up to her to, sort of t uh, to sit down and say these things. And she, you know, given what she's done so far... She may may well appeal. I'm, I'm, I'd be I'd be very very surprised if she doesn't appeal against this. Community. What did you when you were a serving cop? Uh, you, you would have, as I mentioned, arrested mm. some some mm. pretty grisly characters. Mm. You've looked into the eyes of people that mm. are capable of horrendous things, and this w may well be industrial scale serial killing. But what was always your own assessment when you'd go home from work, having spoken to these people in complete denial of horrendous crimes? Well, what did you? think made them tick? What was your thoughts on what made a person function in that kind of way? Well, I think, I think you're dealing with people that are, don't function in a normal way. They have a very, very different set of values. You know, they have, they will, there'll be some people who will not think twice about stabbing you in the eye if, if you've upset them. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a completely different set of values. So it's not the kind of value, you can't sit down with somebody and think, well, you know what, we're gonna have a reasonable conversation. These were individuals. Uh, some of them were extremely charming. Uh, they were individuals who you think were exceptionally bright. Some weren't. So uh, I, I think that, that that psychopath element of it means that they have that absolute desire to succeed in whatever they're doing. And I think you'll see this with Letby now, is that she will be... Uh, she's She has a 10-month trial. You imagine how many... How many 10 months of a criminal trial, how much information yeah. has to be crammed into that. And she would have done it to make sure that she uses every opportunity to get off these offences. And, and in the in one of the jurors, I mean, it's 12 um, members of the jury, one was, um, one was allowed to um, leave the jury. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's, when you have... Because normally a, a jury trial isn't that long. You know, many jury trials are two or three days. Yeah. This is 10 months. Yeah. Dal, thank you. No, thank Dal you. Dal Babu with us, former cop here on Talk TV.